Coliseum, WHCS Channel 29 presents the Boo Williams Tidewater Teams versus the AAU Soviet 1988 Junior Boys Basketball Tour. The Boo Williams AAU All Tidewater Boys Team versus the Soviet Union Junior National Team. Hi everybody, I'm Tim Cole along with Bob Hintz and A.G. Womble and we are here at the Hampton Coliseum for the second year to bring you the game between the Boo Williams All-Star Team and the Soviet Union Junior National Team. And Bob, I'm excited about this game. We've got some great looking ball players out here this afternoon. Of course, most notable for the Boo Williams team will be Alonzo Mourning. I don't know of any basketball fan in the area who isn't aware of him and of course there's some players that the fans may not be aware of before this game but certainly will be after this oh, game. Oh there's some excellent ball players down there on the all-star uh, all team of Boo Williams. He's got uh, the stith, stith young man out of Brad Stith out of uh, uh, group two school is going to UVA. He's got uh, Terry Kirby who is just a junior who is an excellent basketball player and an excellent football player. In fact he wants to go to college and play both, Excellent. at least doesn't for the even, first two years. Doesn't even start to describe Terry Kirby, of oh, course. No. He, he's phenomenal. Uh, uh, Marcus Michael from uh, Denby High School. Right. And we have uh, another young man from Hampton High Kevin School. Kevin Swan. Kevin Swan we got to see play. Boo Williams has been looking for this this game all year long. They got beat last year. He felt like the, the kids just didn't play as good a basketball as they were capable of the second half. And so this is, a, he says this will make his program here but I want to tell you something about Boo Williams. His program is noted nationwide now. He's doing an excellent, excellent job. In fact, he has taken a team over and is going to tour uh, the Soviet Union uh, this year. Uh, as you see on the, the, the lineup here, we got uh, the, the men that's on Boo's team. Uh, it's Michael and Swan and Stith and Young, Burton, Johnson, Kirby, Jones, Parker, and Morning. And uh, I tell you what, the people who got to see these Teams uh, warming up out here. They got there was quite a show put on with the slam dunk. Uh, we noticed that the big uh, guy Constantine for the Soviet team is did not play it uh, last night up in New York City and is not playing today. Now I don't know if he just didn't bring, come with the team or what the, the the case is. But they advanced one of their two losses last night, Tim, and in beating the uh, New York uh, Gonchos, I believe is the, the name of the team up there. But this is exciting. The place is starting to fill up, and uh, you can kind of feel excitement going through the air, Tim. Well, it is going to be an exciting ball game, undoubtedly. The Soviet team is a very large team. You look down their roster; they don't have anyone on the team that is at less than six foot four, and the majority of the players are considerably taller than that. You've got a couple of six-seven players. You've got four six-nine players. You've got a six-eight. You've got three six ten players one six eleven so the soviet team is going to come in here and their size is going to be very very dominating and one of the things that we've heard from both pat patrick uh, the uh, well-known peninsula official and attorney uh, who was kind enough to talk to us before the game uh, he went up to new york last night and he saw the game and he saw a very physical game he said the soviets play extremely physical of course those of us who are familiar with international rules know that the officiating allows a more rugged type of play. Well, and, uh, more you latitude. have to wonder where that's going to come into play, whether the, uh, the American team, the Boo Williams team, will be able to realize that and to adjust accordingly. Well, I don't know whether they will or not, Tim, but we'll be able to see. But uh, also who went up with Pat Patrick, of course, was uh, Mike Talon, the, uh, one of the assistant coaches who is also the head basketball, girls basketball coach out at Phoebus, one of the assistant football coaches and the head baseball coach who we got to see and do a ball game last week when they played over at uh, uh, Bethel High School. Getting back to this game, what you said about being a rugged and very physical game, Tim, it will be, and this is one thing that Pat said, that, that we will see whether this uh, all-star all team of boos can do the the physical they're probably more of a finesse team and a lot quicker than uh, and then the soviet team uh, 
it's uh we're really looking forward to it. i'm getting excited i got some rule changes here i hope the fans had a chance to copy down the soviet lineup now just a moment ago <laughs> because they're going to need that to refer later on when i stumble over these names oh uh, well listen their mamas won't send you any cards <laughs> i don't imagine but we do have the three-point goal uh, uh they have a 30 second clock which is on top of each one of the baskets tim uh they will be shoot three shots Three foul shots if they're fouled in a three-point range and they're attempting to uh, shot. You can't do an alley oop. Uh, it is legal to touch the ball in the cylinder and the way these people jump, they all play above the rim, so that could come into uh, a factor. If there is a foul called on, if a technical foul counts as a personal foul, uh, they can option to either shoot the free throw or take it out of bounds. Only the coach can call a timeout, two timeouts per half. Three seconds uh, count, throwing the ball in bounds, a five second count to shoot the foul shot. And you may not throw the ball off of a uh, defender to uh, knock it out of bounds. That is an illegal thing too. So uh, we're gonna see a few changes here, but we'll see excellent ball because all of these teams are very, very good. And we hope to pick up the announcer with uh, A.G. Womble. I didn't get a chance to talk to him, see if he's over there or not, Tim. He was. Uh, he had an, uh, a very exceptional game at uh, U, uh, year at uh, U University of North Carolina, and there's a good shot of him coming across the floor. Fine young ball player. Guy Rogers is the man handing him a portrait of Jr. Of course, Guy Rogers uh, starred for the San Francisco Warriors with Will Chamberlain and, and company this back in the 70s. Inductee, Alonzo Mourning. These are inductees into the Virginia Hall of Fame. Uh, I believe that's what we're seeing here. Well, that is a fine, fine uh, effort. And it's really nice to have these fine young men rep being represented. And I and know Alonzo and JR know Mark, each other from playing Mayor, against each other. Jimmy Eason. I would suspect they see some future play against each other. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm joined by my fellow council members, Dr. Colonel Spencer. Baxter Simmons and Charlie Wernham. It's our pleasure to welcome all of you here today, and particularly our visitors from the Soviet Union. As a token of our friendship, we would like to present the head coach and the captain of the Soviet team a special prize gift from the city of Hampton, our prize, Hampton Cup. We hope that when they return to their home and either display the cup or drink from it, they'll remember that they were in the oldest continuous English-speaking settlement in America. 
It's also our pleasure today to make the announcement to our citizens of the city of Hampton that our city council has proclaimed today, May the 8th, 1988, as Boo Williams Day in the city of Hampton. Certainly, Boo is the coach of our team, but Boo has been a wonderful inspiration to the youth of our community for the last several years. He's been a great role model. He's certainly not only been a great athletic coach, but he's emphasized the athletics or academics and good citizenship. He's brought a great deal of attention to our city from throughout the country. He's been persistent in what he has done, and just last Wednesday, our city council voted to provide the funding for a dream of his and one which he has been really after us for many years to do, and that is an outdoor basketball court. And starting this summer, it's our intention to build one of the finest outdoor basketball facilities in the country, and this is to help fulfill a dream of Boo. So, So again, we'd like to extend a special welcome to everyone. Wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day, a special greeting to our visitors from the Soviet Union, and also a special tribute to the coach of our team, tremendous young man, a great citizen of the city of Hampton, Mr. Boo Williams. And now, if both squads will please line up facing each other on their respective free throw lines, we will introduce the teams. What they're going to be doing, Tim, is they're going to uh, line up on the foul lines. They'll introduce each team, and then they'll walk out and uh, exchange gifts as, as uh, customary when the Americans and uh, any of the uh, foreign teams play. crowd is still filing in here to the Coliseum. I would say we have about half of the house filled for this game. I don't know about over here though. You may recall that last year this Soviet team, not this identical Soviet team, but certainly the same representative team, defeated the Boo Williams All-Stars 71 to 62. The a game that saw Boo Williams' team AAU lead at halftime Soviet but only junior fall behind team. in the second half. And now we have the introduction Number of four, the players. Six foot, nine inch, Yevgeny Kirzurin. <laughs> Number five, six foot, seven inch, Vadim Budzire. <laughs> Number six, Six foot nine inch, Sergey Grazin. Number seven, six foot eight inch, Andre Lukianic. Number eight, six foot four inch, Rauno Pekna. Number nine, six foot nine inch, Masin Astanin. Number 10, six foot four inch, Raymond Megliniex. Number 11, six foot 10 inch, Kana Shilgiya. Number 12, six foot 10 inch, Gennady Uspensky. Number 13, six foot four inch, Vidanis Mark Kioski. Number 14, six foot seven inch, Sergey Ivanov. Number 15, six foot 11 inch, Gintaras Inikas. 
The Soviet junior team leader is Sergei Chernov. The head coach is Vladimir Obokov. Assistant coach, Sergei Selyevalov. And now the Boo Williams AAU All Tidewater Team. Number 10, 5 foot 11 inch from Denby High School, Marcus Mickle. Number 11, 6 foot 2 inch from Hampton High School, Kevin Swan. <laughs> Number 20, from Brunswick High, 6 foot 6 inch, Ryan Stiff. <laughs> Number 21, from Deep Creek, 6 foot 3 inch, Curly Young. Number 22, from York High, 6 foot 4 inch, J.J. Burton. Number 23, from Green Run, 6 foot 3 inch, Kenny Johnson. Number 24, from Tam High, 6 foot 3 inch, Terry Kirby. Number 30, from John Marshall, 6 foot, 7 inch, Reginald Jones. Number 32, from Maury, 6 foot, 7 inch, Cornell Parker. Number 33, Parade All-American from Indian River High School, 6 foot, 11 inch, Alonzo Mourning. Number 34, from Norview, 6 foot, 8 inch, David Baldwin. Number 40, from Lafayette High School, 6 foot, 5 inch, Dirk Williams. Number 42 from John Marshall, 6 foot 7 inch, Milton Bell. Number 44 from Thomas Jefferson, 6 foot 7 inch, Kendrick Warren. Number 54, from Ryan Academy, 7 foot 1 inch, Jimmy Munden. And two alternates, from Norview, 6 foot 8 inch, Marvin Childs. And from Great Bridge, 6 foot 6 inch, Terrain Sears. Coaches for the Boo Williams AAU All Tidewater Team. Assistant coaches Guy Rogers and Bill Toast. And of course, head coach Boo Williams. Team position is Frank Brown and special consultant. Mike Talent. <laughs> we will now hear both the Soviet Union and United States national anthems. Please stand and remain standing. The Theta High School color guard will bring in the United States flag. The Smithfield High School band will play the U.S. national anthem. Please remain standing until the colors have been withdrawn.
first day of the batter is out. That was Stacy May. Probably didn't get a chance to uh, mention what we're talking about or not. But Stacy hit the first pitch to the third baseman, and she is now going to throw the third pitch. Kind of getting the breath of the Shortstop. And the shortstop throws the ball away. It's going to get safely at first. Ball is low in the dirt, and it is 
saved by Michelle Gardner, the catcher, as she had the ball out in front of her. The runners on second and third, still nobody out. And one run across for Kikazan. ceremonies, the introductions of both of the teams. I've been practicing my pronunciation during <laughs> all of this, and I'm no closer to getting it right than I was an hour ago, but uh, we are just about set to go. They're going to have a five-minute warm-up period for the two teams again. Well, they need that, Tim, after you go through those uh, pre-game uh, festivities of uh, introducing the players and then standing for both national anthems and uh, uh, Mayor Eason got up and made a few comments and all. Uh, the young men got to cool down, and you don't want to pull any muscles or anything. So it's a good idea to have a five-minute uh, warm-up, and uh, they will jump around and try to get the juices flowing real good. We'll get the starting lineups. Uh, hopefully, when they, I guess when they go on the floor, I don't know that they're going to give them over the PA or not, but uh, we're looking forward to a real good game. You know, reflecting a little bit, Bob, on last year's game, uh, which is the only thing we have to go by, the uh, the game, as I recall, was uh, a very physical game. Uh, by physical, what we mean is a lot of times uh, in a high school and college ball, you have physical games, but the officials will, will call fouls. In an international rules game like this, they do allow much more incidental contact. Now, you can't hatch at anybody to death and you certainly can't run over people but they do allow you to do more hand checking and more body positioning in the rebound area right and that's where i was going to make the point tim more of the contact you're going to find is going to be underneath the basket when they're going for rebounds and and that sort of thing um, it is a real physical game international rules basketball has always been much more physical than what we play in the uh, aau or even in the NCAA, but uh, in the contact will vary from league to league. I think the Big Ten is noted for more physical play than, say, the ACC, which is more of a finesse. Uh, their uh, their players are more of a finesse type of ball players than what uh, uh, physical type that you see in the Big Ten. Incidentally, you are watching the Soviet team warming up the inning to uh to not the right before the warrior the team that's directly in front of us to start the first half uh, the the rule changes that you referred to bob that are crucial in this situation are of course the fact that you have a 30 second shot clock uh, somewhere between the 45 second uh, ncaa ruling and the nba 24 seconds so you've got kind of a, uh, a trade-off there as far as the time is concerned uh, something that you mentioned also that's very important, and that is three seconds to inbounds the ball, not the five that we're used to right. in the NCAA. And you have five seconds to shoot once the official hands you the ball at the free throw line, where I believe the rule for NCAA is 10 seconds. Yeah, and, and they may be lenient on that, Tim. I don't know. I just have a rule differences that was handed to me. In fact, I got this last year when we did this game. I want to thank Willie Brown for that because he got it for me last year. And as a good announcer should do, I hung on to it all year long. No one else is going to be able to do it again. You never know when you're going to need it. <laughs> you're right. My wife says I don't throw anything away, and that is true. She will have yard sales and not tell me about it. <laughs> so she can get rid of some of the stuff I have. But uh, this will be a physical game, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing exactly how Boo is going to attack it. I believe the way Pat... Patrick talked during his interview with uh, A.G. Womble, but that the Americans, uh, or AEU uh, Boos team, I'm going to call them Boos team, 
are probably a little bit faster. They may push the ball up a little quicker, try to get some transition going here, and may uh, pressure the uh, or the Russians a little more on defense. I don't know. I know he's got some super athletes over there uh, on his team. One of the questions that I would like to have asked Boo Williams, uh, had I been given the opportunity, is uh, how does he plan to attack the situation? How, what is his strategy to negate the obvious physical play of the Soviets? And, uh, you know, that type of thing. We've got Pat Patrick, by the way. Uh, we're trying to get him to uh, maybe join us late in the first half. Maybe late in the first half we can get Pat over here and he can join us and talk about yeah. what he's seen so far and, and maybe his predictions on well and, and give him some little half. insight to see how they're playing too they this uh soviet team played last night so they are playing the second game within a 24 hour or less than 24 hour because they played last night so they may be a little bit tired there's no there should not be any jet lag here involved because they're in the same time zone but we'll see if the the play of last night has anything to do with it. I don't know how physical that game was last night and uh, how the New York team uh, mashed up against them. I do know that they lost, and that was a, a re advantage loss that the Soviets uh, experienced last year. So now they have advantage ones and losses. And, of course, Boo, this is one thing they've been looking forward to all year long. It's been written in the paper that he can't wait to play the Soviet team again. A point here is that there, there's, there's a couple of different Soviet thoughts here. The Soviet team plays as a unit throughout the year. It's not an all-star team that's, that's put together for a specific short period of time. The difference is, though, that Boo's team this year has played longer together than the one that played last year. The last year's team did not have any experience. Right, into the they game. didn't, and this Boo's team has won uh, some of the uh, games that they have played in. We see that Alonzo is uh, jumping against number 15. Uh, <laughs> Sergio. Is that Sergio? No, that's not Sergio. All right, well, well, we'll work on the names as we go along. The tap is controlled by the Soviets. And they immediately go inside to number 15, Tim. The boot team uh, jumped out into a man-to-man, -man, and that's exactly what the Russians do. They look like they're playing a zone. Maybe it looks more of a matchup zone. It is matchup zone, Tim. Inikas was the scorer for the Soviet Union. This is still Shot rims the bucket and comes out for the Soviet team. They are in the red and white uniforms. Boo's team in blue and gold. Crashing the board, the ball tipped out nicely and controlled by the Soviets. This is Pekka. Luke Janitz misses his shot, and Alonzo Mourning gets the rebound. Well, the key will be how well Alonzo does inside, but also one of the things that uh, concerned Boo was the uh, play of the point guard. He doesn't have a true point guard out there. He, he doesn't feel like... And, uh, That'll have a lot to do with this team, and that's number 24 is Terry Kirby, who is an excellent athlete. And that is Kirby chasing down the rebound. Shot missed earlier by David Baldwin of Norview. 2 nothing, the Soviets. Just underway from the Hampton Coliseum. Tim Cole, Bob Hintz, and A.G. Wobble. From eight feet, no good. Tip is good, and a basket will count, and we have a foul. Uh, excellent tap in on that missed shot. That shot was missed by Brian Stith, who is a young man out of Brunswick High School that's going to UVA. And he was the player of the year in the AA league, I believe, Tim, uh, as opposed to the AAA. I believe he was the player of the year. Just did beat out number 24, Terry Kirby. Astanin is charged with the foul. That's number nine. That's his first. Alonzo Mourning gets his credit for the basket, and he converts the free throw. So the AAU team goes on top three to two. That's the old-fashioned uh, three-point play. Ospensky inside. Looked like a double dribble. It wasn't. Battled for and controlled by Mourning. Well, he went by by Alonzo that time. Alonzo tried to to make the block from the back side, but he did get some weak side help. And the inbounds will come from the sideline rather than underneath the basket. And you notice that they don't hand the ball to the players. 
Inside, oh, that's a morning. Excellent block by Jay, I mean by uh, Alonzo. In your face time as Morning stuffed the Soviet player. Baseline, double team, put it up, no good. Comes out to the Soviets. Oh, the Alonzo thing. Morning was awesome on that block. Yeah, he was. David Baldwin that time didn't follow his shot. He should have followed his shot. All alone, and it won't go. A morning now with four rebounds. He's just wiped the boards clean here in the first two and a half minutes. Kirby mishandles it, tosses it back to Cornell Parker. This is morning from 16. And he'll get pumped up, and he'll get this crowd behind him in a real quick time, Tim. Again, Enikas has it rejected. The crowd is in the game. Feed it on the baseline. Fantastic pass. Brian Smith filled fill that lane. A real good job on that right side, filled that lane on a fast break, and it all was started by the, the uh, block of Alonzo. There you see some of the physical play, as there certainly could have been called a foul, as on that play, David Baldwin was hammered from behind, and in wrestling for the ball on the floor, the jump ball is called. Uh, now, Alonzo did one thing there that the Pat Patrick had talked about. He's got to stay on his feet, don't go with the fake, and he almost uh, lost oh, his shoes on that fake, but uh, they ended up uh, getting the ball and having a jump ball anyway. 15, Enikas will jump against Baldwin. It's controlled by the Soviets. Knocked away as the AAU team gets into this physical play now. <laughs> uh, Tim, first down, long, right? Don't take long. That's right. You get, <laughs> You, you revert back to your uh, sandlot basketball, your your backyard basketball, and you start to play like they play. And yes. it's hard to remember that because we, as a as an American team, are taught that it's a non-contact sport. Of course, we know about non-contact basketball. Right, we sure do. We have a first substitute for the uh, Soviet team there, Tim. That's number five. Come Go ahead, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm giving you the number. That's Puzira. <laughs> Tap controlled by. The Americans. This is Kirby to Stiff. Kirby, no good. And it comes off into the hands of the Soviets. Intercepted. Feed it off in your face. Brian Stiff with the jam. Now, Tim, that was three seconds for sure. Morning rejects two. He didn't reject one, but he rejected two. And how did he get the ball back? Uh, got <laughs> I don't know. I guess you get it because you blocked two shots. <laughs> you deserve it. I nice. tell you, Alonzo is going to be so welcome up there at Georgetown. I know Coach Thompson is tickled to death, and we talked about him being uh, invited to the AU, I mean the uh, Olympics. Olympic team. I'm getting tongue-tied here. 15.53 <laughs> to go. The AAU team of Boo Williams has jumped out on top 11 to 4 from 15. It's up short. And they have outscored him, Tim, 2 to 11. This shot is short as well, but chased down as the Boo Williams team is standing around. Morning again with the block. Uh, I hope Randy's keeping those block shots. <laughs> I tell you what. <laughs> You got to shoot the ball from outside. You can't get shoot it inside. Now with Alonzo running around there. Morning has blocked five to this point. And we've got a reach in foul on Brian Stiff. And they missed the travel. And it was a definite travel that time. But uh, they're a little more lenient on that too in this international rules. 15.30 to go in the first half. And so far it's been Alonzo Morning versus the Soviets. Along with Brian Stiff. Baseline jumper in and out. Tipped around and last touched by the Americans as it went off the hands of Cornell Parker. Well, Parker got a little uh, <laughs> a little help <laughs> being pushed out of bounds that time. I'm telling you, though, Boo's team will adjust to this. I believe they will. He's got some fine athletes out there, and they will adjust. They got to learn to play within themselves and not uh, play with too much emotion. Oh, right. <laughs> it's getting physical out there real fast. This foul is against Cornell Parker, number 32 for the AU team. Parker did real well in the recent AAU tournament. 
state tournament. He had 11, 18, and 13 points in the three different games he appeared. Dish it off. 14 foot, no good. Follow up, no good. Jam it. And now what that guy did that time is he put his hand right on Alonzo and got a little higher. <laughs> Nikas, number 15, has four points. He has four of the six Soviet points as he jammed in that loose ball. From 18, and that is Milton Bell. Heard a lot of things about Milton Bell. He's yeah, he's out of John Marshall in Richmond. And he's going to Georgetown along with Alonzo Morning. As he sure is, and there is an offensive foul by number five. By Bell, I check, check that, it was not an offensive, yeah it is. It's the booze, booze ball, that's right. That's the second team foul against the Soviets. 13 to six as the action is fast and furious. Stiff inside for Morning. Morning finds Milton Bell. Bell puts up the reverse layup and he is fouled. His foul will be charged to Ostinen. That's his second. In all seriousness, that is the most difficult rule for me to understand. I would think it would be. Because in that signal. instance, what she could have done is perhaps drop the ball, throw it to home, and then throw it to third and get a double play. Sure. At the free throw line, the first of two by Bell is no good. Maybe it's because it was back behind the... Well, the Soviets jumped out in a real quick uh, two to nothing lead, but that didn't last long. So Bell goes 0 for 2 at the free throw line, and back quickly come the Soviets. They're going to have to hit from the outside, Tim, because uh, they, they're not going to get a whole lot from the inside. They penetrate and dish it out. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, the back pass doesn't work. As intercepted by Cornell Parker, down the floor for Kirby. Kirby from three, no, it's long. And it's lost out of bounds. It'll belong to the Boo Williams team, okay? 13.48 remains in the first half. 13 to six is the score in favor of Boo Williams' team as we'll have a substitution now. Coming in is Opensky, and he'll replace Ostinen for the Soviets. Stiff tries to feed inside for morning. It's knocked away. Kirby returns the favor, but the Soviets get it back. And they've got a man wide open for the jam. That's Anikas again. He's got six points. Morning down the court, and he is hammered inside. He was going to that basket, Tim. You were going to have to get a truck to stop him that time. Foul against the Soviets. I haven't seen yet. Well, we got a timeout called on the uh, on the court. This has been excellent, excellent basketball. I'm just real tickled to see this. Uh, Bill Williams bringing the, the the Soviet team back here again for the second year in a row. Tim, you know, I have to make a early, but hopefully a, a positive comment. The the Boo Williams team is playing much less stilted than they were last year. They came in, I think they were kind of tight last year. Uh, I think the lack of experience on their part might have shown. Well, Tim, they've come out, and, and during this first part, of course, Morning was not nearly as significant in last year's game as he has been in the first half. Well, of this Tim, game. I think one of the things that you can see here is that the team is playing with a whole lot of confidence. I mean, they come out here, and they feel like they can beat the Soviet team. And I'm sure that what Pat Patrick and Mike Talon saw last night as a scouting report was able to help these young men to know what to expect, what kind of a physical play they're going to see, and that sort of thing. But they come out here, and they are just playing with confidence. And, of course, playing together as many team games as they've played so far uh, also helps their confidence because they know what each other a little bit better now. Now, the Soviets have been fairly cold from the field as they have only connected on three of 16 attempts, while Boo Williams' team is six of 11, which is better than 50% at this point. And the turnovers favor the U.S. team by the count of two for us and five for the Soviets. 
At halftime, uh, A.G. Toby's going to try to get up with J.R. Reed and talk a little to uh, J.R. during halftime, Tim. That's one thing we can look forward to. Alonzo Morning now is perfect at the free throw line. He's three for three. And it's a 15-8 score with Morning having seven of those 15 points. Double team the ball that leaves somebody open. Here he is, drive the lane and puts up the reverse layup. It doesn't go, but the crowd oohed and odd with that one. Stiff. Inside for Morning, has it knocked away. Good defensive effort by Puzara. And a good feed by Puzara. The goaltending call will be called, be forthcoming. As credit the basket to Ospensky. Now you can touch the, the ball if it's in the cylinder, but you cannot touch the cylinder. Milton Bell uses the glass, and he's got four. Seven point lead for the AAU team. Peck a hook shot. You don't see that often. It doesn't go. The Soviets are getting a whole lot of offensive rebounds, Tim. Blocked nicely. Scramble for the ball. Controlled by the Soviets. From 17 feet, nothing but net. Opensky has four points. The Soviets have five offensive boards in this game so far to only one for Boo Williams' team. Three on two, off the glass, it's good. Markiev, it's up. Well, that was not a good uh, choice of a shot that was taken that time by Kirby. He's an excellent shot, but uh, shooter, I'm sorry, but uh, Boo needs to get into some sort of an offense. He's getting one shot, and that's all. They're not getting any rebounds or nothing where the Soviet team is getting, they're getting more offensive rebounds. We'll get that statistic from Randy by halftime, but uh, Soviets are getting a whole lot more second chances than what Boo's team is right now. They look a little bit tired, and of course that happens when the adrenaline flows real quick like it did at the beginning of this ball game, and they might need to get a quick blow. Ryan Stiff, he's got eight points. And you can see why he was uh, player of the year in that group two. 19-14, five point lead for Boo's team. Soviets moving around nicely. Hook shot doesn't go. Battle for the rebound. It comes off in the hands of Cornell Parker. Parker will slow it up. Feed right side. Milton see, they're Bell. shooting the ball, Tim, and Alonzo isn't even down there, so he didn't even get a chance to. He doesn't even get a chance to uh, uh, offensive rebound. Boo didn't like that call at all, and I'm not too sure if that was an off, if that was goaltending or not. That ball looked like it was still going up to me. Pekka will be credited with the basket for the Soviets, and it's a three-point lead for Boo Williams' team. Congratulations to a little more than 10 minutes and 50 seconds remaining here in the first half. Marcus Michael is so in now, Tim. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to override you. Marcus Number 10. Michael. But Denby High School, we got to see him play quite a bit this year. Morning, triple team, puts up the hook, no good. Bell climbed the back. He got caught where the Soviet didn't last time down. Marcus Michael comes in, as you said, along with Kendrick Warren, number 44, for the AAU team. That foul was on Bell, that's his first, the team's third. Michael guarding the Point guard for the Soviets, Pekka. This is Pekka. Inside it comes for Unikas. Three point range, good. So Pekka now has five points and, and they're tied. Climb back in though, do a tie here. Well, they got away from their game. They started having Morning shooting 15 and 18 footers. And you need to work the ball into Alonzo Morning. And have your, your guns outside. You got Stiff and Bell. And Michael that can put the ball up. Morning, this is off. This is Kendrick Warren, and it's lost out of bounds. Last touch by the Soviets. And we got seven sec seconds left on the shot clock. 9.56 left in the half. It's been a good one so far. Marcus Michael, the Denby star. Looks inside, bounce pass left side. Stiff, got no time left. They didn't yeah, get the shot. They were not aware of it. Michael was not aware of the clock. Nobody on the American team was aware of the clock. So a 
Shot clock violation gives the ball to the Soviets and a chance for them to take the lead. Double team the Soviet player. He's finding the open man. Some fancy moves inside. It's knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the Soviets. I'll tell you who's fun to watch is this Puzara, number five. He's really got some. Yeah, he's the one with moves. no hair. <laughs> but he is. He is very active out there. Ryan Stiff is guarded too closely, and they call him for the offensive foul. So the officiating, in my opinion, and it's been purely my opinion, has been very erratic at this point, calling nothing when the Soviets crash the boards and calling touch fouls against the AAU team. And that was a push off there by number eight, bringing the ball up. Pushed off Michael. Still tied at 19, nine minutes and five seconds. Wide open. And over quickly to defend was Stiff. Alonzo guards the man inside. 11 seconds on the shot clock. It's, it's, it's of no consequence as Markevichup makes the basket and the Soviets lead by two. Stiff will try a three-pointer, doesn't go. And right now, Boo's team needs a timeout, in my opinion. They look like they're disorganized. And then we've got a foul. And this foul will be charged to Kendrick Warren, number 44. And a timeout is being called by Boo Williams. He emphatically calls the timeout, and I think he's got a right to. Uh, his team really isn't getting any of the calls well, right they're now. They're not doing what they did the first four or five minutes of the ball game. The Soviet team is doing an, uh, an excellent job of blocking out underneath their basket. And when the Boo's team shoots, they're not getting any second shots. They're not getting any offensive rebounds. They have calmed down the field, the floor, and shot before morning gets down there, and you don't even have your good rebounder down there. You got some statistics there for us, Tim. Well, a couple of the very important statistics prove out the fact that the Soviets have hit the boards well. They have 14 rebounds, six of those on the offensive boards here so far in the first half, while the AAU team of Boo Williams has 10 rebounds, only four fewer, but they've only got one offensive board. So that tells you that the Soviets are getting five more chances on their offensive board, uh, on their offensive basket. Now, the other side of the coin is the shooting statistics. Well, they've stayed fairly consistent. At one point, Boo Williams' team was hitting 6 of 11, while the Soviets were 3 of 16. Now, Boo's team is six, excuse me, 8 of 17. So they've gone 2 out of 5 for the last little run here, while the Soviets have gone from 3 of 16 to 10 of 28. So they're picking up the pace there. And the turnovers for Boo's team have increased as well. They were uh, down, they were ahead 5 to 2 in that category at one point. Now it's 5 to 5. So the turnovers have evened up. The offensive rebounds are the difference right now for the Soviets. 21-19, the Soviet team in front. Look like traveling, nothing called. Baseline jumper is knocked out of bounds by Kendrick Warren. In the lineup now for Boo's team, Reginald Jones, number 30, has come in. Milton Bell is in there along with Kendrick Warren and Marcus Michaels. Physical play continues. Shot doesn't go, and it's chased down for the rebound by Milton Bell. Marcus Michael to Bell. Look inside for uh, You can't force the ball in either, Tim. You gotta throw move it the ball around. You gotta move that ball around to get a good entry pass. And you can't force that entry pass into Alonzo. And they can't uh, rely completely on him either. Well, they were getting the scoring from Stiff initially. They gotta have some patience. Stiff is out of there now, and we've got a foul. This one will be charged to Reginald Jones, number 30. And Ellen Vines, he had the ball down here, his triple team. Get it back out to somebody. If he's triple team, some, there's two other people wide open. Milton Bell will come out along with Marcus Michael. Coming back in is Terry Kirby, number 24, for Blue's team. Cornell Park, number 32, comes back in as well. Baseline, Boo guards and gets the shot and then a foul as Enikas was on the back of Alonzo Morning. And that's not the first time he's been on, but that's the first time it's been called. <laughs> I think I couldn't have put it any better. 23-19, the Soviet team on top by four. 
They trailed 19 to 10. So as you can see, they've reeled off 13 and a three point shot by Terry Kirby. Down the court quickly and it's, well, they're gonna call it lost on the baseline at uh, Opensky. Terry Kirby knows these rules. He was taking that ball out of the officials and was gonna get it down the court. Uh, I'm real impressed with this young man. I haven't got to see him play that much. But uh, we are looking forward to when Hampton High School plays Tab the first game of the season. And uh, this is one of the games we're hoping to, to bring our audience. That'll be a great team. Hampton High's got a tremendous program, and so does Tab High School. This is Terry Kirby, Mr. Everything at Tab High School with the ball, and lost out of bounds off the hand of Kendrick Warren, who just wasn't ready for the pass. Well, he took his eyes off the ball as he was being passed to him, Tim. And he was getting ready to pass or make a move with, and he hadn't got the ball yet. Inside it goes. Morning got a, the rebound. It's knocked out of bounds, and they say Morning touched it last. Morning doesn't argue the point. Uh, I think what he's upset with is the guy was on his back, but the ball did go off of uh, Alonzo. 6.40 remaining here in the first half. And the ball lost out of bounds by the Soviets. And that's the hustle of Terry Kirby. Kendrick Warren, feel it! Alonzo Morning! You gotta have Alonzo underneath the basket as you can see why. He will get some of those offensive rebounds and uh, convert them. Nice soft touch by Pekka. Pekka now has nine points. And it's a one point Soviet lead, 25-24. A little more than six minutes to go in the half. Baseline Kirby comes up short. Morning tips it. It goes out of bounds. It'll belong to the Soviets. And we have a substitution now for the Soviet team. And number 21 for the uh, All-Stars come in too. Curly Young comes in, a young man from Deep Creek High School. Luke Janitz comes in for the Soviets, number seven. 25-24, 6.01 left in the first half. This one is popped up to the catcher and she makes the catch. The Soviets are quick. There's no two ways about that. Looking for the cutter. They really move the ball, move well without the ball, Tim. Nice double block there as Stiff and Morning will get credit for a dual effort on that. Popped up to second last time. From three-point range, comes up short. Morning had a man on his back and a good call as the foul will be charged to Inikas. Morning's telling the official he's been doing it all night long, and he has. <laughs> That's true, he has been doing it all day long, that's for sure. Pat Patrick has sat down with us and joined us. Uh, Pat, your comments on the first half so far. Is this what you saw in New York last night when they played the Gauchos team? They were much more dominating in New York, especially inside number 15, had 16 points in the first 10 minutes of the ball game. And it was a, I'm surprised that he was playing consistently as long as he has. He got real tired last night. Luke Janitz scores for the Soviets. Well, I want to check what I asked Pat, too. I, I, I feel like, Pat, that the Booze team is playing with a whole lot more confidence than they did last year. Don't you agree? Oh, most definitely. They, they were going to say that they could beat this team. That their talent-wise, they're better. Well, it's a matter of, you know, the Soviets have been playing together for a long time. The Booze team hasn't. But if they are good, solid game. Four thirty-eight remains here in the first half. A three-point lead for the Soviet team. Terry Kirby is on the floor along with Brian Stiff. Uh, number 21 for the Boo Williams team. Curly Young is out there. 
Milton Bell along with Alonzo Mourning. Knocked away by Bell. Battled for it on the baseline, and they'll say the Soviet player stepped on the baseline. Inbounds pass comes from the side. That's something you just have to get used to. Yeah, it's never thrown out from under the hand of the basket or at the baseline. It's always on the side. Three-pointer by Kirby. No good. I, I feel like they need to be a little more patient with their shots uh, rather than taking those outside. They got a tremendous inside uh, game with, uh, with Alonzo. Let me ask you, Pat, uh, as an official, um, and you're watching this game, is it tough to call an international game, in your opinion, more so because of the, the fact they allow more physical play? Up by the Soviet team and a subsequent foul, and it looks like it's in a bonus situation, so the uh, AEU team will go down and shoot. I'm not sure which one's going to shoot, but uh, Alonzo looks like he's a little tired. He's the only one that hasn't got a blow yet. He has been running up and down the court feverishly here in the first half. Milton Bell is at the free throw line. Uh, what is your opinion, uh, Pat, on the way you've seen Alonzo Morning play in this first half? You got to remember, he's he's the top man out there, and uh, it's very important that we have the rebounding, and he supplies most of the rebound. And there's an excellent steal there by Terry Kirby. Ryan Stiff can't get it to go, but he'll get two, and the foul is going to be charged to Ivanov. Well, there's a chance for the boot team to go back up on top, Tim. They uh, were trailing by one on that nice steal by Terry Kirby. Ryan Stiff has eight points. Uh, this is his first trip to the free throw line. One of the things that I've noticed, Pat, in the first half here, there seems to be, and I, as an official, I'm sure you won't agree with me, but there seems to be some lack of consistency in the calls. At the very first of the game, they were calling nothing, and then it seemed like they switched over and they started calling everything. Well, they are calling it a little bit tighter than, than when they started out. And uh, I'll say last night, they called virtually nothing. But well, there's another fine steal by Terry Kirby and a layup. And AUU team has regained the lead now, 30 to 27. Block they the, really the follow. the boards. Don't oh, they? A fine follow up by Grayson. Uh, I'm happy to say, Pat, your mic is working now. We weren't getting you uh, very clearly at the first there. <laughs> but we're all set now. 325, one point lead. Doesn't go. Inside, Morning has the board. It's stripped away from him. And then he falls to the court. The official says, no, it was just a block shot. So wipe the blood off your face and keep playing. 17-footer <laughs> doesn't go. Morning is really jammed inside. And he's getting a little bit frustrated right now. He's kind of tired of being grabbed and pushed and shoved. And you saw that, that there were four Soviets around him. And they were the they, the they really sandwiched him that time, uh, Pat. But I tell you, Lonzo's got to not let that bother him and, and not throw the, his uh, elbows and, and get in an emotional game. Exactly. He has got to keep his head in the game, especially now. He's played 17 minutes straight, and here's a time when he could be prone to to get a couple of dumb fouls that he certainly can't afford to have. Most certainly can. We got some statistics there, Tim, too, while we have a timeout here. We sure appreciate Pat coming by and, and talking with us. That's great. Well, thank you for inviting me. But don't leave. Don't leave. <laughs> oh, we're going to keep you working, Pat. 3.03 to go in the first half. The statistics that I'm given here by uh, Randy Hintz, no relation to my... Uh, yeah, what do you mean? It's good looking just like his daddy. Good looking like his daddy. The, the Soviet team has seven offensive boards and 12 defensive boards. The AAU team is uh, the like number of defensive rebounds, but they only have two offensive rebounds. And right now, that has been pretty much the difference in the game. The shooting statistics are not great for either team, but the AAU team is 11 of 27 versus 14 of 36 for the Soviets. And the turnovers are almost equal at nine for the AAU team and 10 for the Soviets. Well, Tim, one of the reasons that you see that there's so few offensive rebounds by the AU team is because they're shooting the ball before Alonzo gets down there before they're set up in any offensive pattern. 
And, that la and last night was the same way. Uh, the Soviets out-rebounded the New York team almost two to one. They, they just keep banging the boards, and especially when the officials, if they're not calling it tight, they are going to let them bang, and they go after it all night long. So Morning is perfect at the free throw line. Four out of four so far in the ball game. Thanks. Boo Williams team with a two point lead. Morning attempting to make it three, can't get it to go. Kirby chases down the rebound. Terry Kirby, the consensus All American for Tab High School, both in basketball and in football. And Morning has it stolen and is he fouled? I'm not sure how they're going to call this. I think they're going to call it on the line, so that time he left. He kept the ball down there where they could get a hold of it. He's got to protect that ball a little bit better when he goes to the hoop, Pat. That's exactly right. You cannot put the ball on the floor in the paint against this team. They sag very quickly. And what he needs to do to get him off of him is once he gets it in there low a couple of times, jump it right back out to the guard. And then they'll, they'll tend to stay away from him, but they're sagging those guards back in on him. Lukianitz connects on two, and we're tied at 31. Two minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first half. Well, as, as Pat exactly. was talking about, excuse me, Pat, <laughs> but as you were saying, when they when they fall in and pinch on, on Alonzo inside, that will open up that 14, 15-foot jump shot, which the athletes that he's got out there right now, they'll have no problem hitting that shot. Stiff has gone cold. When uh, Mike Tallon and I were looking at the game last night, we thought the key to this game would be the play of Bell and Stiff at that forward position on exactly that. When the ball went inside, if they could can that 15-foot jump shot, it would really open up the inside for the big man. You've got to have a balanced attack because if you, all you had was Alonzo Morning out there, you'd never win the ball game in spite of his great abilities. You just, you have to keep the other team honest. Terry Kirby knocks it away, goes up for the shot, yes! And Boo He's Williams, an exciting player to watch, Boo I'll tell Williams you the said, truth. Wow, you blew it, Mr. Official, that was a three-point shot, and they only gave him credit for two. So Kirby apparently was right on that line, and the official ruled he was outside of that line. Stiff with the rebound, down quickly, here's Bell. Bell will drive and put it off the glass and in. Nice double clutch that time with Bell because if he had a double clutch, he would not have got the shot off. Milton Bell, of course, headed for Georgetown along with Alonzo. And well, this George Thompson has to be beaming about these two <laughs> acquisitions. He most certainly has to. Good offensive board for the Soviets, but it doesn't go and Morning clears the board. This game has been a game of uh, real quick spurts and short spurts by both teams. They'll run, roll off uh, six or eight quick points. And that's six straight Lee points for the uh, Boo Williams team. Isn't that something? Alonzo Morning shooting from the top of the key. That's not the first time in this ball game he's done that. And now the Boo Williams team is on top by six. Wide open underneath. Morning comes over. The ball will go in and count. And the foul will be charged, in fact, to Brian Stiff. That'll be his second. And the bucket will count as Lukianitz will go to the free throw line to try for the three point play. Chance to make the margin three points if he can connect. I know that the AU team was expecting some uh, physical contact, uh, <laughs> but I don't think it's, as phys it's more physical than what they thought it was going to be. To, to be honest with you, they have been told all week long, go in there, expect to bang around, don't worry about it. And that's one thing that got to them last year. They worried about that it was very physical and it bothered them and they, it, it seemed to affect them. Uh, this year, hopefully they, they know what to expect a little bit more. But as you can see, you can watch uh, 15 and uh, morning once the ball swings to his side, they will go after each other. They sure will have this. They get to know each other real well, don't they, Pat? <laughs> they do that. But he's got great moves, good head fakes, as you can see. 
Morning blocked it. We're down to two seconds. Ball batted around. Finally controlled by Alonzo Morning, and that'll be your halftime. So exactly the same results as last year's game. At halftime, a three-point margin in favor of Boo Williams' AAU team. And of course, last year they had that same three-point lead only to fall apart in the second half and lose by nine. Uh, Pat, what do you look for in the second half? At the same thing. Both teams are gonna continue to bang each other. Um, I hope that the AAU team is not tired. They got tired last year, but I think they're in a little bit better shape and I think they have a little bit more depth. All right, well, Pat, we really appreciate you coming by. I know this was unexpected for you to be asked to join us. Uh, I believe Pat told me once that, that he would give up his law practice if he could do that. I, I don't that's <laughs> right. I, I, I envy you guys. I think this is great. <laughs> I tell you, we really enjoy it, and, and it really makes it much nicer we can have some knowledgeable people like you to stop by and, and offer us your uh, expertise because you look at the ball game a little different than what I do as a former coach. I look at it in a different eye that's than you. That's right, that's right. But thanks a lot uh, any time. Okay, Thank you, Pat. Pat. We're Pat, gonna, Pat. Right now we're going to uh, have an uh, a, uh, interview. AG's got J.R. Reed, so uh, take it away. Your thoughts on the first half? I think the team's playing very well. I, know, I think Boo's done a good job with them. They're prepared. We've got a lot of great athletes, and I think they're going to do well and hopefully win this game. We expect this type physical game. When you use international balls like that, and I know my experience with it is very physical, and I think that's the way the guys like to play. A lot of people don't know this, but you played Bill Williams' ball for two years. Uh, your thoughts on uh, Bill Williams and his uh, league? Well, his league's meant a lot to me. You know, I've got an opportunity to travel a lot of places, play against some great competition. You know, Bill's has done an outstanding job here with the organization. I think everybody's benefiting from it. All right, Dean Smith, uh, a lot of people like to know your thoughts on playing for Dean Smith. You know, he's a great man to play for, and I really enjoy playing for Coach Smith, and that's really the main reason I chose North Carolina, because of him. And he stopped me a lot of things besides you know, basketball, and I'm really enjoying my life there, and I plan to have another good two years, hopefully. What about the Olympic uh, team and uh, your chances making the team, JR, and your thoughts about that? Well, I think about going there in condition and um, play as hard as I can, I have a very good chance of making it. I realize there's going to be a lot of great players there, but um, you know, I think I, I can, I'm pretty good when I go out there and play as hard as I can, and hopefully I'll be able to make it. All right, JR. Uh, what about the second half? Now, what do you what do you expect in this game here? Well, hopefully, hopefully the team will get the ball inside a little bit more. Being a big man, I like to see the ball go inside. And, um, I think they get the ball inside to Alonzo and the other big guys. They're going to come out on top. All right. Is Alonzo going to be on that Olympic team with you? Uh, he has a very good chance. You know, he's a very good player. He's going to be one of the best players there, especially in, being in high school and as good as he is. I think his opportunity is very good. With you and Alonzo, we can't lose, can we? I don't know. We have to both make it first. Listen, appreciate your comments coming down here. Good luck to you. Right, We're you. real proud of you. Thank you. Tim Bob, J.R. Reed. Appreciate Thank you. We really appreciate J.R. coming down and talking to us. And uh, you can tell that uh, he's got a lot of respect for this uh, Boo Williams AAU team and uh, what Boo has done for this uh, basketball in this, in this area, Tim. We are at halftime. And, Bob, I haven't been disappointed in the least. No, sir. We have seen one very exciting ball game through the first 20 minutes of play, and I'm sure if our fans will stay tuned, they will see yet another uh, exciting second half. Did you see the shot of that guy? <laughs> our <laughs> halftime score, AAU team of Boo Williams, 37, the Soviet Union national team, 34. We'll be back with second half action after this brief timeout. Coliseum, Tim Cole with Bob Hintz on A.G. Wommel. We are at halftime, and both teams have returned to the court for their second half warm-ups. And boy, we have seen a good first half. Oh, uh, we most certainly have. We apologize for the background noise coming from the band. Randy asked me, uh, he says, do you pick up the drums? I said, you better believe it, but at least noise? we can hear each other. What noise? I don't hear it. <laughs> you got some uh, halftime statistics there, Tim? Yeah, I sure do. Uh, First of all, for the Soviet Union, they had 34 points at halftime. They trailed by three. They hit 30% of their shots from the field, 15 out of 50. Three of four from the free throw line. They had 31 rebounds as a team, and they committed eight fouls as a team. They were led uh, in the scoring leaders by Enikas with eight points, and Lukianas had seven points. For the Tidewater All-Stars of Boo Williams, they have 37 points. They hit 
14 out of 32 from the field for 44 percent. 8 of 11 from the free throw line for 73 percent. They had 24 rebounds as a team and as a team committed eight fouls. Alonzo Morning leads the scoring at halftime with 10 points. Brian Stiff has eight along with Milton Bell and the Morning had 12 rebounds and I would have to guess and I don't have an official stat on it but I have to guess that Alonzo Morning had at least eight or nine blocked shots easily. He had four in the first two minutes of play. Uh, at least he had a, a, a minimum of eight blocked shots, Tim. Uh, the second half is what they're going to have to do. The, the second half. Well, we're having some audio problems yeah. momentarily. We lost. I think I'm back on now, Tim. The second half, what the AU team is going to have to do is stay with the game plan and not... Uh, get into a, uh, a game where they come down and make a quick shot without rebounders underneath there because you alluded to the, the offensive rebounds are real, real uh, a small number for the AU team where it's much larger number for the Soviet team. But this Soviet team is really an excellent condition team and excellent in fundamentals. So here we go with the second half, Tim. So the AAU team leading by three points as they did last year in this game. And they control the tap to start the second half. That's the AAU team of Boo Williams. 19 and under is the category for these young men. And of course their, comp their competition today is the Soviet Union Junior National Team. Turnaround jumper is no good by Bell. And back come the Soviets. Now Tim, this is exactly what the Soviet team did last year. The second half is that they came out and played a zone, and the AU team just looked like they did not know what to do against that zone. What they've got to do is penetrate a little bit, dump the ball off, get some good shots, and spread that zone out a little bit. And then we had a goaltending call on uh, Alonzo, I guess it was that time. I couldn't see the player. So the Soviet team will get credit for the basket and the ball knocked away controlled by the Soviets put well, it up and good by they came out real quick and scored four straight points and took the lead Tim Markiewicz up has taken the Soviet Union team right back into the lead That's what they got to have is they swing the ball around, hit that open man for that nice 15 to 18 foot jump shot. They got some excellent shooters out there, so that's what they're going to have to do. Terry Kirby hit a three pointer. That's his second of the ball game. Alonzo Morning on the block. And he pinned that ball right on the backboard, but he's really slow coming up the, f the floor. Nice give and go to Brian Stiff. So Stiff had six points in the first five minutes of the ball game and ended up with eight at halftime. And now he has 10 with that bucket. Hook shot, no good, but he got his own rebound, blocked inside, put it off the glass too strong, batted around and finally controlled by the Soviets. Terry Kirby, good play to knock it away. But the Soviets get back quickly as bodies are flying all over the place. Shot no good. Morning got the rebound. It was knocked away, and it belongs to Boo Williams' team. 42-38. AAU stars up in front by four. It's about the point last year where the Soviet team took over. She's got a five and two record, Tim. You just got to be patient. They got to be patient. Don't force anything. Morning triple team kicks it out to Stiff. Stiff wide open, can't get it to go. But and nobody's no blue shirts. Tim, nobody is crashing a board for the AAU team. I mean, a shot is taken and nobody is going to the board at all. Soviet shot too short. And they will follow the shot. They really follow the shot well. That's why they get so many offensive rebounds. Hook shot in. Enikis has eight points. Well, that's the only shot he's going to get off that, uh, <laughs> that Lonzo's not going to block. 42-40. Yes. So Cornell Parker gets his first bucket of the ball game. Cornell Parker had 11, 18, and 13 as Terry Kirby makes it in. Terry Kirby is on fire now. He's got two three-pointers here in the second half. 
And it's a seven point lead for Boo Williams' team. Inside, <laughs> fake put it up, foul. Well, he did a good job of faking that, Tim. That time, Tim had got the uh, AU player off his feet, and that's why they got the foul. And that was one thing that uh, Pat said that uh, him and uh, uh, Mike Talent picked up is they do a good job of head faking, and if the uh, AU team could stay on the floor and not pick up those cheap fouls like that, send them to the foul line. Kevin Swan is in the ball game now for the American team. Kevin Swan, of course, a standout at Hampton, Hampton High School. First of two, no good. Second, no good, but the Soviets get the rebound. Morning, beautiful block as he had to fend off an elbow that was stuck in his ribs. Morning will pump. No good. Oh, Swan made a nice play to get the rebound. It's lost, however. But that's not where you want Alonzo to shoot from. Well, you got Alonzo shooting from 15, and Kevin Swan, half his size, got the rebound. The roll goes as Pekka gets the three-pointer, and it's a four-point lead for the AAU team. Stiff. Looking to find the open man, throws it away. A bad pass. Well, that's what you don't want if you boo. You don't want some silly turnovers. Pick set, and the shot is good by Luke Yanitz. He's got nine, and it's back to a two-point lead. So five straight points for the Soviets. When the Americans take time to set it up properly, they do all right. But when they get into this run-and-gun thing where they've got the big men outside and the little guys rebounding, they're not doing real well. It's morning, yes. Well, that was a good offensive rebound. That's the first time I've seen them crash the boards real hard. And there was two of them in on it uh, that time. That was a sky ball, but that's the only way you could get it over Alonzo. Unikas connects, and he's got 10. Back to a two-point lead. Kirby will fire for three. It's off the front of the rim. No good. Put it up. No good. And Kirby hustles for the ball, but it's controlled by the Soviets. All alone down the court, and blocked from behind, Reginald Jones caught up with Unikas and made sure he didn't make the easy basket. That's Jones' second personal foul. What I started to say a moment ago, and the tempo's been so fast, I haven't had a chance to say it, but the AAU team has David Chili Baldwin on the team. He's dressed for the game. He had 14, 14, and 20 points, respectfully, in the state finals last week, and he hasn't seen a minute of play. They have to wonder, you got an awful lot of talent sitting on the bench. Well, you really do, but uh, I don't want a second guess. Well, I'm not second-guessing Boo. I'm just saying that there's still some firepower out there to be used if need be right now everything see this is what's getting to me Unicus is using that left arm he is he time. is pushing Alonzo off every time he whoever's shoots. pushed him he is I mean the NBA would call that as a push off you watch him next time he has the ball number 15 for the Soviets pass behind stiff gets it into morning morning is double teamed knocked away stiff gets it back Rather, Jones puts it up, and it doesn't go, but he's fouled. But you notice one thing Alonzo did is he put the ball on the floor down there close to the paint, and he loses because three Soviet uh, ball players went down to take it out of his hands. Yannikas picks up his third personal foul, so that would be uh, a large benefit for the Americans if he gets in foul trouble. At the free throw line, Reginald Jones, and he gets the roll for his first point of the game. Maybe a little uh, upset with herself because she thought she could have made it and did not make it. This one is short, and the Soviets bring out the rebound. 50 to 49, a one-point game for the AAU team. Kirby chases it down, tries to save it, he does. And we have a backcourt violation, but they don't rule it. They don't call it. Stiff goes strong to the basket. It won't go. Uh, that was a, a nice, strong move to the basket. He just didn't, he came away empty-handed. Nice behind-the-back pass. It doesn't go. And we've got a push-off inside, one of the few that have been called against the Soviets. 
have substitutions now as Swan will come out of the ball game for Boo Williams team and Kendrick Warren, number 44, will come in. So Kirby has been utilized extensively by Boo Williams today. Kirby averaged about seven and a half, almost eight points a game in the recent tournament that was held. There you see him calling the shots. This is Kendrick Warren, and it goes off the, the iron. It's knocked out of bounds. Who touched it last? The Soviets. 50-49. The pace has been very quick. Well, they're not taking uh, the shots that I think the Boo would like them to take. With one exception, they haven't needed the time clock today at all. The shot clock has been very unimportant. <laughs> they could turn it off. One time, I think the uh, American team got uh, the time ran out on them. And on a good play to first base. So you, you <laughs> Varsity blocked inside, and a foul is called. And I believe that this bath. And this will be charged to the Soviets, I believe it is. Number four against the second one in a row on him, Tim. Kassirin now has two personal fouls. Yeah, Jenny, I got the first name right. <laughs> You've done really well with the names. 13 minutes to go. Boo Williams team up by a point, and it's knocked away and stolen inside by that same Kassirin. Quickly down the court, fast break time. Basket is good, and a foul is called. And that was just be, that was because of a ball player turned into the lane against the zone, right into three people. It took the ball away from one down, make it. I have a chance for a three-point play here, and they've already got the lead now, and they could uh, extend it to two. There is a 15-run rule. The foul has been charged to Terry Kirby. Becca got the basket and will get a chance at the three-point play. At this point, the Bruins are still in it. No good on the attempt. It's chased down in a corner, however, by Unicus. Running off for the Bruins. And they say last touch by the Soviets. Kirby very alert to get that ball in bounds quickly, but the Soviets are back. Inside for Morning. Morning has it blocked, and a foul is called. This one is on Kassirin also. That's his third. But see, you know, that time they got the ball in the paint within three or four feet of the basket to morning. He turned around with throwing the basket, did not put the ball on the, on the ground, was what he has to do, Tim. When once he dribbles that ball, he's going to lose control of it, and he has every time he's, he's tried that. And he is tired, there's no doubt about it. He's the one, one of the only ones that hadn't got a blow yet. And that's the first time that he's missed from the free throw line. He was perfect four for four until that miss. And he gets the second, and we're tied at 51. 12.30 to go in the ball game. It's been a good one, it's been close. The AAU team has led by as many as seven and eight points. Soviets have led by two or three at best. Unika's shot doesn't go. It's tipped out and taken by his teammate. Put it up and good, and that's Pekka. Pekka has absolutely really hurt. Every loose team. ball that has hit the ground, the Soviets has come up with. Nice move to the bucket by Kendrick Warren. That's his first basket. Nika spins, turns, pumps, puts it up, and gets the roll. What a nice roll he got on that, too. Tim, I did get to watch the, uh, 14 uh, points uh, for uh, Unicus. Uh, really Pekka has 18 by, uh, to lead the Soviets. Uh, Pekka number eight. Really this is Brian Stiff, team who team has team been team. somewhat quieted here in the second half. Inside from Morning. Morning puts it in. Number 15 is just shaking his head for the Soviet team. He did a good job of bodying him up and keeping him out of there, but it didn't do any good. Alonzo got the basket anyway. That shot was going on a downward arc the whole time it was shot. Inikas, good hustle to get that rebound. Man is open, and Alonzo Morning jams it back in his face. 
So Morning has got probably a dozen blocked shots. I remember last year he had something like 17 blocked shots in this game. And he certainly hasn't done anything to diminish my admiration for his play. Uh, he's playing much better this year. Much more Tim, so. But uh, they've got to, to play within the, 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 constri uh, constri the constraints that uh, Boo has put on them, and uh, sometimes they get out of that, that pattern. And the ball belongs to the Americans. Rebounding here in the second half, 14-2. Melton Bell is uh, limping a little bit coming up. Here goes Kirby with his three-pointer again. Won't go. Well, he must have a green light, Tim. Whenever he feels like he can shoot, uh, he's open enough to shoot it, he shoots it. Seems 16 seconds on the shot clock. Kuzira in low for Yannikas. And the foul is charged to Cornell Parker from Morey. That's his second. That's about six pitches. That is the third team foul. 10-17 to go. The Soviets have a one-point lead. And substitutions for the Soviet team. Opensky comes in the ball game for Kasurin. So I'm sure that the coach, Chernoff, the head coach for the Soviet team, is certainly going to want to try and make some hay. There you see Chernoff on your screen. Sure, he wants to make some hay while Alonzo is on the bench. Well, I, there's no doubt about that, but he also called his team over and got a, a free timeout that time. He got to talk to four of his ball players while they were waiting to, to line up for the foul shot. So uh, he got a free timeout. Now they got a three-point lead. So Soviets up by three, have been led by Pekka, number eight, and Inikas, number 15. And this pass goes awry. It belongs to the Soviets. And they tried to get a substitution in, but it didn't work as Morning is trying to get back in the ballgame. Baseline fake. But well, Tim, a team that has uh, caused a violation cannot substitute unless the other team substitutes. If you've had a violation against your team, that's why he was not allowed to come in. That's one of the AAU rules. Even though it's an, a dead ball foul, yes. it doesn't matter. Kirby inside, put it up, and it doesn't go. And Stiff comes down with it for Lou Williams. His shot rolls nicely in. And now we've got timeout for a substitution as Alonzo Morning will come in the ball game. And Terry Kirby will take a well-deserved break. Kirby with three three-pointers in the ball game. Has 13 points unofficially. Three points Soviet lead. Dish it out, put it up, no good. Morning with position and the rebound. Then he almost throws it away. And he in fact did, they say that Milton Bell stepped on the side baseline, sideline rather. It's getting more and more physical inside. Well, and it's going to get more physical as they get a little tired or two, Tim. In goes the big man, spins again. Morning gets the block, but it's controlled by Pekka. Dish it out, put it up, no good. And a foul. I could have called that one, and I'm not an official. <laughs> Well, I mean, that was so obvious, but they didn't call it till after he draped over him about two, three seconds. Uh, I think they were going to let that go as incidental contact. Ospensky, <laughs> number 12, is called for the foul. That's his first. And now the AAU team with a chance to cut into that lead. Comes off the glass strong. Lonzo Morning tries to dish it out. He was in a bad position underneath the basket. Well, he was helped underneath that basket. And a foul on Milton Bell. As he went up to shoot that shot, he was given a little shove, so he was really out of position. But the Soviets uh, uh, Union uses their hands real well. If, they, if the people watch as they go up for shots and rebounds, they're pushing and getting uh, a little extra position each time they do it. 
as you know, Bob, as a former coach, what you do, of course, is you play the officials. You get what they'll give you. And if they're going to let you do a certain type of thing, then you'll take advantage of Absolutely. it until they and stop calling it. That is, they're allowing them to do that. So you have to adjust accordingly. One out of two from the free throw line for Ostensky. 8.20 remaining in the ball game, a four point lead for the Soviets. Milton Bell wants to go inside to Morning. Morning double and triple team. Stith is open on the baseline. Damn it! Well, that's one way to make sure they don't block it. No rebound necessary. Two point lead for the Soviets. This game is up for grabs. That should be walking, and nothing is called. Battle four inside. Kick it out, three point attempt. Pekka has absolutely destroyed the AAU team here in the second half. Now, I can't figure out why walking wasn't called on that play. Bob. I can't either. You got can't three officials out there, and now none of them saw it. Three point try, no good. That's off too strong. And Pekka wisely just tips the ball to himself. Drive the baseline, put it up, no good. And back come Boo Williams and his team. This is Cornell Parker. Morning. Good morning. That was an excellent pass. Parker with the assist. Morning with the jam. Ball is loose, and it'll be first and ten as the intensity increases. Terry Kirby's used to being tackled. <laughs> He's but also used to running over people gets, and around people. He gets tackled, but not nearly as often as he runs over people. Of course, we're uh, mentioning Terry Kirby from TAB. He is a incredible athlete. Well, he's All-American in both football and basketball. Well, football yeah. has got to be his his end result in his career is because of his his uh, abilities on the, on the gridiron are just unquestioned. He had... Average over 250 yards a game last year in the playoffs. Stiff, yes, it counts. Oh, excellent, excellent play by Brian Stiff. Brian Stiff took the ball to the hoop. He jammed it home, and he was fouled, and the basket counts, and a chance for a tie ball game, but a timeout has been called by the Soviet Union team, and we are seeing everything we had hoped to see, and the crowd here has to be pleased. Well, they really have. They are being uh, exposed to some of the finer athletes in the uh, Eastern Virginia area, and they are just really looking excellent against the Soviet team right now, Tim. They've got a chance to tie it up with uh, less than seven minutes to go, and this is anybody's ball team. And I know that uh, Boo is saying thank you for this timeout. <laughs> because this team could send all the rest that they can uh, get. But this young man for the Soviet team, uh, uh, what's his name, is hitting all those three-pointers. Well, they're not, they haven't hit so many three-pointers. He just keeps hitting the, the, when they get a loose ball. That's uh, Pekka. He is really destroying them. I don't know how many he's got this second half, but he is really doing the job on the, on the team. Well, he had nine at the halftime break, and he's got 22 on the game now, so he's added. 13 points in the second half and, and every time the ball has been loose he's just picked it up and put it in it's almost like the garbage man he's been the opportunist who has been there when the ball was loose and not only has he gotten it back for his team but he's also scored well not only that Tim but every ball that's hit the ground after a missed shot the Soviets have ended up with it not, not, not the American team the rebounds in the second half as Stiff doesn't get it to go, but the rebound comes off for Fool Williams' team. And that was David Baldwin. That's Chili Baldwin I had mentioned earlier, number 34, who's in the ballgame now for Boo Williams. Also in the game is Marcus Michael. He can't get it to go, but Stiff gets the rebound, puts it up. Doesn't go, but a tap by what a nice tap in. Cornell Parker, number 32, with a super tap. He was off balance and fading from the basket and simply jammed it home off the glass. And the AAU team of Boo Williams has gone back up on top. Baseline, put it up, no good. Ball batted around and finally controlled. This is Parker. Parker being chased and hounded and fouled by Pekka. 
That would only be the first on Pekka. I'm sure Boo Williams hoped that was his fourth. <laughs> Pekka At has, least. He's been everywhere. Oh, he's got Christie. All right. So Curly Baldwin, Chili Baldwin, excuse me, is in the ball game. Number 34 at the free throw line is Cornell Parker with one and one as for the balance of the six minutes and two seconds in this ball game, who Williams team will be shooting at the free throw line one and one. Rebound put up no good, tap no good, and finally controlled by Inikas. This is Pekka, left-handed dribble, finds his man open in the corner, fake, pump, feed it inside, kick it back out, score. Lukjanic has 11 points, number seven for the Soviets, and they regain the lead by a point. Stiff wants to go inside to Morning. Michael looks to Morning. Morning is being sagged on by three Soviets. Stiff will take the jumper from the baseline. Doesn't go, and the diminutive Michael struggles and battles for the rebound. Kicks it back out. <laughs> I know he's never got that much contact. Playing in the uh, Peninsula District. Michael for three. No good and easily rebounded by Pekka. How he found his man all the way in the corner like that, I don't know, but put it in, and that is Luke Janitz with 13 points now. You miss a long shot, and they go down and score. That really hurts you. Marcus Michael, he's the ball handler. Denby High School. Cornell Parker. Brian Stiff to Michael, to Morning. Blue Williams team trying to find the open man. Two seconds on the shot clock, yes! So Marcus Michael gets the bucket right at the horn. And it's back to a one point Soviet lead. Struggle for the ball, it's loose. Finally knocked away and controlled by Blue Williams team, they have a chance to take the lead. Marcus Michael, they need to wait for Morning to get back down here. Brian Stiff gives to Chili Baldwin. Baldwin gets his own rebound, puts it up. Yes! Oh, what a nice shot. That's staying after it. It's so easy to give up after you lose it. He went back, got the ball, and put it right back up. So he got an offensive rebound, got the basket, Tim, and now he's got a chance to complete the three-point play. So Chili Baldwin, who has scored prolifically for Boo Williams' team, he had 14 in the semifinal game, at, excuse me, the quarterfinal game last weekend, 14 in the semifinal, and then he had 20 points in the final game. Comes in late in the second half here, gets the bucket, and will try for the three-point play, and Boo Williams' team is up by two. 70 to 68, 3.58 to go in the ball game. Marcus Michael with Pekka. Pekka dribbles around. Oh, what a nice move. This Pekka is really something. 24 points. He has done it all. He's driven to the basket. He's shot him from outside. He's hit three pointers. Kirby loses the handle and he'll give it up to the Soviets. Tied at 70. Marcus Michael hand checks Pekka at center court. Goes for the steal. Pekka puts it up. The man just doesn't miss. 26 points for Pekka. And Boo Williams wants a timeout. And it's a, it's a well advised timeout. You can't steal the ball in open court or miss the steal in open court and let Pekka free. What did you say? He's got 25 points or whatever he's got, but he is just, he's been amazing out there. So what you gotta do is play him heads up. Don't let him take the open shot. Don't let him penetrate. You go by the steal and you miss the steal. He's wide open for the shot and he converted it. See if Randy has some uh, stats for us here. Shooting statistics here in the second half. Boo Williams team is 14 of 33, while the Soviets are 16 of 30. A little bit better than 50%. Rebounding has evened out as Boo Williams team now has 11 in the second half to 17 for the Soviets. Turnovers are pretty, mo pretty much the same. Six for Boo Williams team, seven for the Soviets. While we have this opportunity and there's a very 
brief break here. We do want to thank all the fine folks here at the Hampton Coliseum for all of their cooperation in our setup today. Our crew has been here since early on Mother's Day, and uh, for that we are thankful for them for their usual excellent effort. And of course, Jerry Zomplos here with the uh, promotion for Boo Williams all-star team has been very helpful with us. Without him, I could have never pronounced the names of these Soviet <laughs> players, so Jerry gets my appreciation for that, if nothing else. Pekka will put it up no good. One of the few times he's missed, and Kirby brings it down. A three on three, finds the open man, and a poor shot put up by Baldwin. And now they've got a man all alone down the court, and jam it time. So Lukjanic makes it a 15-point game for him, and it's a four-point Soviet lead. This is when the AAU team has to tighten down. Ryan Stiff, and he is fouled as he went by Lukjanic. And Stiff will get a one-and-one -one trip to the free throw line. The Soviet team has had their hands full. They easily beat a New York team last night. And that's not been the case here, regardless of the outcome. There you see the scoreboard and the results of the game so far with the time remaining. Well, these are real crucial uh, free throws, Tim. You've got to convert, especially on a one-on-one -on -one situation. And, and, and he did do it, and that's given up two points. Possibility of letting them come down and perhaps going to a six-point lead. Then your strategy changes. You're going to have to go through the three-point shot. All alone underneath, Luke Yonitz makes it look easy, and now we've got a six-point deficit for Boo Williams' team, and they've got to get it organized. Morning has been covered like a blanket, and he gives it off, and the jam by Milton Bell. Fans can look forward to that for years to come at Georgetown, as both of these players will be heading for George Thompson's team up in Washington. Two minutes to go in the ball game. 76-72, the Soviets. Iguinis knocked away, last touch by Cornell Parker of Boo Williams. 154 remaining. The Boo Williams team has to get the ball back and not give up any more points right now. Now we've got an official timeout. As I believe he might have been warning both the both a uh, morning and Unikus to uh, cool it for a moment. Unikus has it knocked away by Steph. Steph saves it, but not quite in time. That was a good move. You know, Unikus puts that left arm out every time. He does, and he protects himself. But, Tim, if they'd have let that ball go out of bounds, the clock would run all out, and the Soviets the would have lost the ball because they didn't get a shot off as it was. They got the ball back because we knocked it out of bounds. We're the last one to touch it. As you've said before, you never will fault a player for aggressiveness. And no, uh -uh. If you go for the ball, you can't be sure who last touched it or how they're going to call it. So but you're right. I think you're absolutely right. Had we let it go, it would have been Boo Williams' ball. 135, 76, 72, a four-point deficit. The Soviets looking for the open man. This is Pekka. Pekka. Got it. He got it anyway. They were calling for goaltending, but it won't be forthcoming. Becca with 28 points and 19 of those here in the second half. Kirby for three. Yes. Well, that's what you got to do to get back in this because you're within three points now. Down by three and hustle all over the court. Cornell Parker, number 32 sacrifice the body in an effort to get that ball. So you've got a three-point game right now, a minute and two seconds remaining, and it's crunch time. It is definitely crunch time, but they can't stall it, Tim. They only got 26 seconds, and they got to do something with the ball. So Boo's team has got to play real tough, heads-up defense. Don't foul anybody. Don't let them get a good shot. Get the ball, come back down, and hopefully get another three-pointer, tie the ball game up or at least get a two-pointer, because they should be able to get at least two more possessions each way with uh, two, uh, 102 left to go in the game. You see the Soviet bench, the trainer feverishly trying to cool off some of the players. They have played a superb game. The Soviet team is, uh, is just, <laughs> they, let me tell you something. 
the team you're looking at right now, Boo Williams' team, has done a phenomenal job in this game. They have stayed with the Soviet team. They have led for the better part of this game, and they're still not out of this game. But when oh, you consider that the Soviet team is a national team, and we're looking at a Tidewater regional team, you got to take your hats off to Boo Williams, his coaching staff, and that group of young men there. They well, have they, played a great they game. They have worked real, real hard. They've been practicing every night. It's obviously shown because they have played a great, that was three seconds and no call. This is Pekka as he drives to the board and he's fouled. And he's the one man you probably don't want to foul, Tim, because as good a shooter as he is from the outside, he's probably an excellent foul shooter. Interestingly enough, he's only been to the free throw line one time and he missed on that try. That being on the attempt to complete a three point play. And now Pekka will be given two shots. And he's 0 for 2 at the free throw line. That's about the only thing he hasn't done superbly. And he gets one of the two. And now we're talking about a four point lead with 56 seconds to go. Lou Williams' team needs a bucket here desperately. Cornell Parker is short. And saved inbounds by the Soviets. Knocked away, stiff all over the court. Parker and stiff hounding the ball. Kirby knocks it away from behind. It's loose, picked up by the Soviets. Blocked by Morning. Throws it down. Kirby's got a break. Taylor. We got a two point game, Tim. And the Soviet team wants timeout. 26 seconds to go. And the shot clock is off. So they don't need the shot clock at all, but that was an excellent breakaway, an excellent steal, and Kirby went up in the air and jammed that ball like it was second nature, Tim. Well, he did that like he was six foot nine instead of six foot three. I'm impressed with Kirby. Kirby came into this game not having done a great deal of scoring. He had six points against the Piedmont Gold team last weekend. Then he came back with 16 against the Maroon team and only four in the championship game, which was a, a Boo Williams blowout. Can you imagine? I well, mean, most of the player, the uh, his uh, front line didn't even play that game. They just, I mean, it was just, it was like an 80 point lead at one time and it was all uh, the second and third stringers were playing. 18 points in the game for Terry Kirby. When you take Kirby's scoring touch and Alonzo Mourning's rebounding and block shots, not to mention his 17 points, we have seen a superb effort by this team. Brian Stiff with 16 points, 10 points for Milton Bell. And they are hounding the inbounds pass. Kirby is gonna be called for the foul and they did the only thing he could do. He had to foul the player and Pekka for all of his adeptness at shooting two-point shots. See, they don't have to shoot, Tim. That's right, international they rules. They take it out of bounds if that's what they choose to do. That's a good point. I'd almost forgotten that, that in the international rules, the offended team has the option of either shooting or taking the ball out of bounds, regardless of the status of team fouls. We saw that come into play a little last year, late in the game, the AAU team last year. That's all right, a three-second violation. No, they're oh, going to call, call a foul. foul. Oh, my. That was easily three seconds on the inbounds pass. If I sound like a homer, forgive me. <laughs> I'd really like well, to that see was definitely, I thought it. that was the call. Terry Kirby hounding the player. Peckard gets it across the timeline. An attempted steal by Parker, and now Kirby is called for his fourth foul. And again, that same option applies here. The Soviet team will undoubtedly take it out of bounds. But they can't throw it back court, Tim. I don't believe they can throw it back court. Now the officials separating Morning and Pekka, excuse me, Unikas. Well, I don't know what the price of admission to this game was, but the fans have gotten their money's worth. They have gotten more than their money's worth, Tim. We're discussing the scoring, but uh, it is 16-1. And again, we have an official's timeout. Are they to call five fouls here on uh, Terry Kirby? I think that's what it is. So Terry Kirby will get a well-deserved round of applause from the fans here at the Hampton Coliseum.
Unofficially, Kirby leaves the game with 18 points, including four three-pointers. Come on, 79-77, Soviet team by two. They've got the ball and 16 seconds remaining. And oddly enough, the AU team now is going to contest the man throwing the ball in. The ball is loose. Oh, and it goes out of bounds. With 11 seconds to go, the AU team just couldn't get a hold of the ball. It was like it was a hot potato. Lukjanic will inbounds. Gets it inbounds this time. And we've got a whistle and a foul on the Soviets with five seconds to go. Apparently, the foul is against the Soviet team, and it'll be a one and one. What is? Got a point for you. Got a point for you here. Do you shoot the free throw or do you try and go? for an well, inbound pass, because you have the option there. You have the option, but look where you would have to take the ball out of bounds. Down there with five seconds. Up here, you shoot two shots. And they're bringing Kevin Swan in to shoot the foul shots, Tim. What pressure on a young man that we've got to see play a lot this year for the Hampton High School Crabbers. Interesting strategy here. Win, lose, or draw, this has been quite a game. Uh, one thing that they got to do is they got to put everybody on the foul line. They got to. Five seconds remain in the ball game. 79-77. The crowd is on the edge of their seats. You miss the shot, you have a chance at the rebound. You make both of them, you've got a tie game with five seconds to go. One and one. Kevin Swan, the left-hander. Yes. beside himself. I can't believe he called the foul, first of all. And that is not all the stuff going on, but the clock had run out. Time had run out. Unbelievable. Shades of the Olympics, 1972. and they called that foul, which wasn't even a good foul on the part the person they called it on. <laughs> it wasn't even a foul, but there was the other way around. Right, it. They get one now. In, time, in, uh, in overtime, Tim, they get one more. They get one more timeout. I had some stuff here in overtime, but this has just been an excellent basketball game. Kevin Swan walked up there as cool as any man I have seen and made two foul shots. the Hampton Coliseum. Tim Cole with Bob Hintz and A.G. Womble. We have got overtime, folks. Now, you can't have much more of a hectic finish. Boo Williams has now discarded the coat. The shirt tail is out. The tie is loosened. And he is in the ball game. Who's not in the ball game is Terry Kirby, as Terry Kirby has fouled out in regulation time. And that could be a very important factor during this five-minute overtime for Boo Williams' AAU team. But Kevin Swan has to be the hero so far in this ball game. He was called upon to come in cold off the uh, bench. Tim, Not sure how he got the chance to shoot the well, free Tim, throw. He didn't even call, he can't he didn't play the second half. And I mean you're he's cold. Pekka, who has been anything but cold, is fouled and he'll get two shots. 
Milton Bell. But the whole place that he has been weak at has been on the uh, foul line. Fortunately for Boo Williams' team, he was unable to hit the front end of that one and one with no time remaining on a very suspect call right in front of our broadcast position. A <laughs> call that I thought was going to be against the Soviets uh, was against the AAU team. Pekka now with 29 points in regulation time adds to that total. Boo Williams' team led by three at the half fell behind during the second half and then with Marcus, not Marcus, Michael, Kevin Swan with two ice cold free throws. He has got to be called the Iceman after those shots. Morning is the man with the ball. He's being slapped and hounded. He drives to the bucket, puts it in. 19 points for Morning. Might want to check some of the Soviets for blood on that last play. They were all over him. Crowd really into this ball game now. Three-point attempt in and out. Inikas was all over the back of the AAU player and a foul called. Well, Tim, let me ask you a question. You think the crowd is into this game? <laughs> Amen. They really are. They they have seen it all tonight. And that is the fifth foul on Kassirin. Number four, he checks out of the ball game. Unofficially, he did not score. And going to the free throw line will be number 42, Milton Bell, who has 10 points so far in the ball game. Marcus Michael is in the backcourt for Boo Williams. And the shot doesn't go. We're tied at 81. The Americans hustling all over the court, trying to steal that ball. 15 seconds on the shot clock, no problem there. And a bad pass retrieved nicely by Unikas. Unikas, the big man, puts it up, doesn't go. He follows his own shot. Morning blocks him, and Brian Stiff brings it down. Two on one. Marcus Michael back to Stiff is knocked away by Pekka. That was an excellent defensive play by Pekoff. Because that was a sure two-pointer. Two Pekka has been terrific in this ballgame. 340 remains in overtime. We're tied at 81. In for morning. It doesn't get to him, however, as it's knocked away by the Soviets. Pekka throws it in the corner. Two-point try. Yes. Some definite emotion being shown by Ostinen, number nine, as he gets his first points of the ball game. Boo is beside himself over there on the side, and nobody guarding him. Take it to the hoop. The foul is called. This on Lukjanic. That'll be his second. Check that. Lost him along the way there. He's got four fouls. Well, if and that's the only thing we missed today. <laughs> Cornell Parks, I, my little computer just went poof a while ago. Cornell Parker will step to the free throw line with a chance to tie the ball game. Shooting one and one. Parker comes up short. Morning is pushed, and the ball will belong to Boo Williams team and Morning is limping as he caught it looked like it might have been a knee in the in the hip. He is double teamed as they are all over. They are holding him and grabbing the jersey. He's getting his his dues paid today. Shot doesn't go. Chased down. Brian Stiff stepped on the out of bounds line. Williams team slow to get back. Morning is there. Jammed in his face again. The no block. And Marcus Michael gets the rebound. Alonzo Morning is something else. Morning will pump from the corner. No good. No one there for the rebound. That's the only problem. Morning back down the court quickly. Last time down, the Soviet team had a three on one. Uh, I tell you, Tim, uh, uh, if Pat Patrick is here, I'd be burning his ear up. 
I mean, they are knocking each other around. Mickle reaches in and grabs the ball, and they call it a, uh, call a foul. I don't understand it. They're, in, they're very inconsistent. The officials I'm talking about. Mark Yetchev is at the free throw line. And he's got the first one. And that, they build a three-point lead, have a chance to make it four points here, Tim. And they're, uh, one of the better ball players is sitting on the bench with five fouls. I started to say it's getting rough in there, but it's been rough all it's game It's been long. rough the whole ball game, but the Americans are not doing a good job blocking out. You should not let the defensive team get a rebound on a missed foul shot, Tim. I think this goes back to what we have heard repeatedly when describing the Soviet team, and that is discipline and control. They, they are always in there with the fundamentals of the game. They're blocking out when they need to and, and all the different things you're supposed to do. Well, there's a chance for them to score three points from the foul line without the American team ever having a ball. Substitution now as David Baldwin, Chili Baldwin, will come in, number 34 for Boo Williams. A five-point Soviet lead here with 2.25 to go in overtime. Clock has stopped. The, there we go. And an offensive foul on Stiff. Give me a break. I tell you, I don't <laughs> like those officials, not even a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the Russians have done, the Soviets have done everything but run over players and they don't call anything. And Stiff sticks his arm out. What about uh, Inikas, number 15? His elbow is embedded in most of the AAU team's ribs all afternoon. Morning again with the rejection, but the follow-up, and now they're going to say the foul occurred on the play and no follow-up shot. But it looks like the Americans are not playing as well disciplined as they should be. And they're, they're playing with emotion, Tim. And they're not playing with the skill that they have out there right now. Because the Soviet Union has been to the foul line every time they've gone down the floor. And I know Boo needs, Bo needs to get something. He got a five point, could be a seven point deficit here with 2.12 to go in the game. So they're going to have to do something. What really seems to be hurting, to be honest with you, Randy mentioned it to me as the start of the overtime occurred. And it's been a very valid point. Terry Kirby is not in the ballgame, and he was a real mainstay for Boo's team. He was really doing a, a superb job bringing the ball up and scoring. I mean, well, and he got the fouls called on him to keep the clock stopped during that last uh, 26 seconds in, the, in regulation, which allowed the Americans finally to get the ball and uh, tie the game up. So, I mean, he did what he was supposed to, but you're right. The, well, the, the best ball player right now, as far as stealing and shooting the ball, maybe sitting on a bench. Not saying that he, he hasn't got good athletes out there, but they've got to get together and start working as a unit. And it doesn't seem like that's what they're doing right now, Tim. Kirby checked out of the ball game with his fifth foul with 18 points. Only one player has more for the American team, and that's Morning with 19. At the free throw line, Luke Yanitz hits the first. Well, I haven't kept statistics, Tim, but they have made, I believe, all but one, uh, all but two of their points from the foul line. So it's a seven-point Soviet lead, and the American team desperately needs some three-pointers. Kevin and Swan is the, in the Kevin game. Swan is your three-pointer right there. This one goes halfway down and comes out. Back come the Soviets. They are relentless, and a Basket by Luke Janitz. 21 points now for Luke Janitz. And in overtime here, it's been all the Soviet Union as they have built up a nine-point lead. Only two points managed by Boo Williams' team. They're going for the three-pointer at every try. And we've got a whistle and a foul. I believe they're going to charge this one to Chili Baldwin. So it looks like, to me, the American team really used all of their steam to get back in the game and to tie it in overtime. And then they've just come out kind of flat here in the last three and a half minutes. 
can't blame them. They have stuck with the Soviet team all the way. This is the largest lead the Soviet team has had, I might add. Nine point lead, minute and a half to go. Don't count out the American team yet. Kevin Swan looks, kicks it back. Now Swan will take the three pointer, no good. Chases down his own rebound, but it's knocked away and controlled by the Soviets. Stiff knocks it away, it goes out of bounds. It'll belong to the Soviet team. 108 left, 90 to 81, the Soviets. American team led by three at halftime, fell behind by six and seven points in the second half, came back and tied it up with no time remaining when the Soviet player Pekka missed on the front end of a one and one. And you can just kind of look at the uh, AU team out there, Tim, and they look like the air have been let out of them a little bit. Well, they just haven't been able to buy a basket. And now we've got a timeout as we've got an injury timeout. Can't make out the number of the player. I believe that is Cornell Parker. No, yeah, check that. 20. It's Stiff. That's Stiff. So Stiff has come up lame, and they're checking him. He's limping and favoring his right leg. Might have a, a cramp. Looks like he's got a uh, cramp in his the calf there, that right leg, Tim. So with just 45 seconds to go, a valiant effort by the American team will apparently fall short as the crowd starts to file out. Three-point range, no good. Morning with the rebound. He's jammed up inside and finally controlled by the Soviets. And we've got first and 10 on the far sideline. Gets a little bit more like football when it gets down this low. You've got to grab for anything you can an effort to keep that ball alive. Half a minute to go. Well, the crowd leaving disappointed, but not unentertained, that's for sure. This oh, has been one of the best games I've seen in quite some time. It really has, and uh, it's a shame that the Booze team is coming up on a short end. Uh, they are definitely a much better team than... Kevin Swan can't find the three-point range. Giannis and Pekka. Pekka is tied up and fouled by Chili Baldwin. So the physical game has continued from the opening tap till the conclusion of the game. Dirk Williams, number 40, is in the ball game now for the Americans. Williams follows up and saves the ball on a nice hustle. Chili Baldwin will fire for three, no good. Rebound put up, no good. Cornell Parker can't buy He just buy can't back. hold on to the ball. Easy jam at the other end for Luke Janitz to cap the scoring and finish off the game. It was like the American team gave it an all to get into the overtime and then it just died. Well, Tim, you don't score but two points in an overtime and a five minute uh, overtime. <laughs> You can tell the air just went completely out of that team. They were playing on straight emotion there, tied the game up on Kevin Swan's ice free throws. And then, uh, of course, Kevin had a chance to win it there with that, that shot at the end. And then that real dumb, well, we didn't like the call when they f called a foul on, uh, on uh, Brian Stith. And, the, uh, of course, the Soviet player went out and missed with no time on the clock. But... Uh, Boo has nothing to be ashamed of. He's got an excellent program here building in the Tidewater area. Well, A.G. is across the way, and we're going to find out just how good his Russian is because he's going to try and interview the coach, Sergei <laughs> Chernov, the head coach, or the team leader, I should say. Excuse me, the team leader. I believe he's actually going to be uh, talking to Vladimir Obukov, who is the coach. But we'll get over to that interview momentarily. Just to recap unofficially for you, the scoring here in the ball game, the leading scorer in the game with 30 points was... Go ahead, AJ. Right, Tim, okay, here we go. Tim, Bob, we got uh, the uh, Soviet coach Obukov and uh, your, his thoughts on the big win. Мне понравились обе команды. Мне понравилась советская команда своей целеустремленностью. 
И мне понравилась американская команда. Они были не юниоры, они были мужчины. Им хотелось победить. Uh, I like both team. Uh, I like uh, my team for uh, 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 winning spirit. And uh, I like United States team. I think they play both team not as a junior, as a real man. Everybody struggle for win. Okay. Uh, can we get a Nikos? Uh, no, Nikos, great game. Uh, Nikos. And, uh, Great game, and your thoughts on the big win? Да, имя. Эникес. Эникес, да. Что вы можете сказать об этой игре? Ну, трудная игра, очень трудная игра. It was very tough game. Okay. Well, listen, we appreciate uh, you guys coming down here again this year. Uh, the city of Hampton welcomes you all. Hope you had a good stay and good luck on your U.S. tour. Uh, он говорит, мне хочется сказать вам, вам, надеюсь, что вам нравится в этом городе Хэмптоне, и мы хотим пожелать вам, чтобы вы здесь хорошо провели время, и вообще хороший тур у вас был. Спасибо. 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 Окей, Тим и Баб, Айди, Инна. Спасибо, Айди. Это было... Я не бы сказал что это было и I don't know why he didn't talk to, to him in Russian. I guess his Russian's just a little bit uh, rusty right now. But, uh, Tim, you got to uh, recap here real quick of the game and the statistics as we go off. Sure. Well, the uh, Boo Williams team, of course, was led by Alonzo Mourning with 19 points. More importantly, his rebounding and block shots. He must have had 15 or 20 block shots in the ball game. Uh, Terry Kirby was instrumental. He had four three-pointers, total of 18 points. He fouled out with just a minute or less than a minute to go in the ballgame. Uh, Brian Stiff he contributed early and finished up with a well-played game, 16 points altogether. Milton Bell, who did little in the second half, had eight points in the first half, only two in the second half for a total of 10. And the rest of it was uh, just a two-point here, two-point there. But... Uh, Kevin Swan, of course, contributed with probably the biggest points to that point in the game for the American team with those ice, uh, icing free throws with, uh, with five seconds to go in the game. Uh, just really, a phenomenal job on his part. He really did, Tim. Coming off the, the bench like that and just doing, making two free, that's tough to do. Pekka led the Soviet team with 30 points. Uh, Lukianitz had 25 points. Unikas, number 15, who uh, AG was trying to interview there at the conclusion of the game, had 16 points, but he was constantly driving to the basket and making things happen for the Soviet team. I can't understand why we're so lucky to have the band in our back pocket, Jim. I, I don't know. People can hear us. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm going to wrap it up here and tell everybody that we, again, want to thank all the fine people here at the Hampton Coliseum for all of their efforts to make this broadcast possible. And we have once again enjoyed bringing this game to you uh, here at Channel 29. It's our aim to bring you as many different sports as we can. This certainly is a premier event, and I look forward to it every year. And hope, hopefully, Boo Williams will have this event next year as well. Well, Tim, we've enjoyed it as usual. We have a crew did an excellent job. Uh, Angela and Bev and, and Jerome and Dr. Sam and Scotty and everybody that's uh, has worked has just made our job so much easier. We really want to thank them and the staff, and uh, and we appreciate bringing these. And we'd hope the the, uh, the fans will write in or call into the school board and let us know uh, that they are enjoying these contests. Okay, again from the Hampton Coliseum, the final score: the Soviet Union Junior National Team 94, the Boo Williams Tidewater All Stars 81 in overtime. For Bob Hintz and A.G. Womble, this is Tim Cole. Thanks for watching, everybody, and good evening. Thank you.